Hey, how's it going? Dave TD here. So Asus announced two new laptops today. Their Zephyrus S as well as the 17 inch Strix 2. So the Zephyrus S is their thinnest gaming laptop they've ever made. It's remarkably thin. It's 15.7 millimeters thick. So last year we had the Zephyrus, like the regular Zephyrus, and we saw devices from Acer, like the Triton 700, which were really thin. Those were like 18, 19 millimeters thick. This thing is 15.7. It feels noticeably thinner. So the design is similar in the sense that it's got like the same kind of design language as the other Zephyrus models and it's made really well. So they've changed a few things. It has an aluminum bottom panel. So the original Zephyrus had a plastic one. I don't know if I like the metal. It, it feels more premium. It looks more premium, but when you actually use it, the metal plate still has a little bit of flex. So I'm not sure if they did for engineering reasons or marketing reasons or aesthetics, but it is a metal plate on the bottom this year. So when you open it up inside, the biggest change is actually the screen. The original Zephyrus had some pretty thick bezels. These are significantly thinner and the panel has improved. It's a 144 Hertz, three millisecond screen. It's fast, it's smooth, it's a really nice looking screen. I think it has 100% sRGB. I would, this is an engineering sample, right? So I wasn't able to run the full gamut of tests that I'd like to, but it's a good looking screen. The webcam still up at the top, which is nice, and there's a chin. I don't love the fact there's a chin, but you know, if I'm gonna have a bezel anywhere, I'd prefer it on the bottom other than the top and the sides but there is a chin. Uh, if you'll notice, the whole keyboard is shifted down again. So the original Zephyrus had a keyboard layout like this, where the keyboard's on the bottom and the trackpad's on the right. And it's something that you just have to get used to. It looks really weird. And in terms of usability, everyone's gonna be a little bit different. I personally have no issues using a keyboard like this. The trackpad's not in an ideal position. Like if you're left-handed, you're screwed. But even for right-handed people, it's not the best location. It's not so much the positioning for me, it's the fact that I don't like my trackpad having no kind of like rest, like a wrist rest for it, but my keyboard I'm okay with. The keyboard actually feels like a regular desktop keyboard. Like if you have one of those small compact keyboards where the keys are butted up right to the edge of the chassis, it feels like that, at least for me, but everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Now, the reason why they do this, the reason why they have this entire shift in the first place, just like the original Zephyrus, is they're trying to optimize cooling for the components at the top. So when you shift it down like this, you can put your thermal solution directly on top of the hottest stuff, like your CPU and GPU, you can cool it more aggressively, but it does require you to shift it down like this. So the thermal solution they're using this year has slightly thinner blades and more blades, which is supposed to help with cooling it down. And it also has that lift, like when you lift the uh, the laptop screen that hinge lifts up to kind of increase airflow. I always wondered if this was some kind of gimmick. The truth is I'll never be able to tell, I'm not a thermal engineer, but my guess is that if you're opening a hole on the side of the device like this, how can it not help with thermals, right? I, I think it's a good thing. I was able to run 3D Mark a couple times on this and the thermals are really good. It is just an engineering sample and I was expecting it to throttle a little bit, None of it. I mean, if they're able to cool something like this, this thin, then I feel like other companies should be able to do the same thing. Uh, biggest disadvantage I see with this thing though is the battery size. It's a 50 watt hour battery. Wasn't able to run any tests on it, but logic would dictate that this is probably what, a four hour battery at best. So if you need it for the full day, you'll have to bring a charger with you. But yeah, super thin gaming laptop that honestly has no real compromises. And that's, that's a nice product. Uh, pricing, I'm not sure. Maybe my guess is like, two grand, maybe a little bit less. Comes in a 1070 Max-Q version. I didn't even talk about the graphics card, but it's a 1070 Max-Q, and you think you can get a 1060 variant for a little bit less, but that's that. Okay, Strix 2, 17 inch. Uh, real quick, I did a review of the 15 inch model. Loved that device. One of the best cool devices on the market right now for that 15 inch kind of mid-tier premium segment. It's not cheap, but it's made really, really well. I mean, these are built they're built to last. I think that's the big thing about the Strix devices. Like they're gaming laptops, but they're built a little bit better than a lot of the other devices. They cost a little bit more, but you're getting some premium components. This device, I think the thing that makes it special is the 17 inch, 144 Hertz, three millisecond screen. So I think it's the first of its kind, really fast, really smooth. Like if you're into competitive gaming and you have to use a laptop, this is like a, it's a nice screen for that. Good laptop. I haven't really used it much. Obviously these are both engineering samples, but that's basically it. Two devices from Asus that I think are pretty interesting ones, particularly this thing. I would, I would consider using this as my daily. I mean, once the review units come in, I'll check it out, give a more thorough examination on it, but I like it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.